Hello and welcome. Let's continue our discussion on the portlet lifecycle. We're going to be discussing interportlet communication. So let's go ahead and get started. So we've already discussed one of the methodologies for interportlet communication or IPC for short. That's when we were talking about events. Another way that interportlet communication can occur is through what we call public render parameters. What ends up happening is as the name implies, we'll have a parameter that's within the render phase that's made public or made available to other portlets. Typically, the public render parameter is made unique or namespace, so that way we don't need to worry about conflicting parameters that might be floating around. So this parameter is made available throughout all phases of a portlet's lifecycle, whether it's the render, the action phase, or anything in between. So how is this achieved? If we're talking about uh, Java standard portlets. Within the portlet.xml, we just declare this is the public render parameter that we support, and then we uniquely identify it using that queue name that you can see towards the bottom. So how do we use these public render parameters? So on the JSP side, right, we will have an alloy UI form, an input, and then we see the name equals tag. In the portlet class, you'll see that using that param util helper class, we're going to get from the request object that tag string. So you can see that for the most part, it's like any other parameter that we would use within the render phase, the action phase, and so on. The only difference is that we declare that specific parameter as a public render parameter. So we have public render parameters and events as the two primary ways of interportlet communication. We're going to touch briefly on some of the non-standard ways in which interportlet communication can be achieved. One of the ways is through portlet sessions. What we can do is have portlets share their session data amongst one another. Again, this can be declared within a Java standard portlets portlet.xml. We can also use client side IPC. It is a legacy method. We again, just want to make it known, made available. Client-side IPC revolves around kind of what we discussed with uh, events, having a sender and a receiver, right? On the sender side, we're going to fire off a specific event, and then the receiver is going to be configured to uh, retrieve it. Again, this isn't something that's standard defined by the JSR 286 or, th or 362, but rather just kind of an FYI for your information. So a couple of different things that we need to remember uh, when we're talking about the portlet lifecycle as a whole, right? When we're looking at the action request, the render request is always going to follow. As the render request is occurring, all the portlets on the page will then refresh as well or re-render. The render phase is used for producing the HTML fragments. Uh, we can't do any sort of redirection with it. When we're looking at window states, window states will be set during the action phase. Uh, action request parameters are not automatically made available in the render phase, but you can pass parameters from the action request object uh, to the render phase, right? So they're not directly made available. You have to do some develop. Uh, you have to do a little bit of work to get that specific parameter from the action phase over to the render phase. So a lot of different things that we talked about. Let's go ahead and summarize the life cycle and the attributes of a portlet. So a portlet is a web component or application that produces an HTML fragment of a page. Java standard portlet creation requires several key elements, including deployment descriptors, a portlet class, and JSP files. There are six phases of the portlet lifecycle, the init phase, the render phase, the action phase, the resource serving phase, the event phase, and the destroy phase. When we start diving more in detail of the actual development of our applications, the main two phases that we're going to be looking at is going to be the render and the action phase. There are three portlet modes, view, edit, help. Again, that's defined by the Java standard portlet. And finally, the JSR 286 established two methods of interportlet communication, events, and public render parameters. So that wraps it up for this video, and I will see you in the next video.